Today we are going to discuss about how to capture data using something other than Excel, and that's called lists. Let's get started. When it comes to lists, it's a part of Office 365. Most of the session today is going to be a demo. And as you know, this is a live event, which means you can't really unmute yourself and ask questions. So how do we ask questions? We have a button there. When you are attending the session, you will see a button called add questions. And that is where you ask questions. Remember to put your name when you are asking questions. Why is that important? Because today we are going to give uh, prizes for the best question. One best question gets a prize and we will also do a lucky draw based on the feedback forms you submit, which will be online. And for that also we will do a lucky draw and two more prizes. What is the price? 1000 rupees Amazon voucher. OK, so let's get started. Now, what is list and where is it available? Let's start with that. As I said, I'm going to do this as the entire live demo. Any point of time you have a question, please post it there. I have my colleague Shesham who is also online. She is monitoring the question. And if she thinks that the question which you have posted should be answered, Immediately, then she will ask me that question while I'm discussing. Otherwise, we will handle all the questions towards the end. OK, now how do we manage data capture on a regular basis? Suppose you have some data requirement, but you can't do it yourself. Generally, we go to Excel. Blank Excel file, put some columns there send that empty file to a number of people. Hopefully they will fill it up properly and then they will send it back to you. In effect, what do you have then? You have multiple files, then you have to copy paste those files. Not only that, the validations you can put while capturing the data are not very powerful in Excel. Just to recap, what are the validations available in Excel? We go to data and validations. Now validations are there, I'm not saying no, but these have not improved in last, I don't know, at least 20 years, the same features. So what kind of validations can we do? Some kind of number, and then we have all the parameters, if you know the range. Then we have decimal, which is similar. List, which can be from a drop-down list, and you specify a range, and similar date time with between start date, end date, similar for time. And if you are just accepting text, for example, date, or comment, then you can limit the length of the text. And then custom, which is basically a formula which returns a logical value. If the logical value returned is true, it will be accepted. Otherwise, it will not be accepted. While we are doing that, you can also give an input message which can be useful to say, suppose I have put minimum and maximum as 1 and 10, but when the person who is adding the data is looking at that cell, there is no indication normally that this is the expected range. So someone puts 11, what are they going to get? They're going to get an error message like this. And then what happens? This error message does not tell me what is valid. It tells me what I have put is invalid. It does not tell me what is valid. So it's a bad idea. So how do you manage that? By the way, in Excel, you go here. Now notice earlier I had selected many cells and I've applied this validation of 1 to 10. But right now I have selected only one cell. So I want to change some settings, not just for this cell, but the entire range. But I have not selected the range. That is a very common problem when you are customizing validations. So that's why this checkbox is there. Say it knows where validation is applied. So it will select the cells across the sheet, not necessarily a contiguous range. Never mind. So in order to make it easier for people to understand, you should put the description which will help people understand what is expected. So now it's like a tooltip. This is also a good way to just put a tooltip. Don't put a validation, just put a message that becomes a tooltip. Having said that, suppose I want to make a particular column mandatory. For example, this was a column called item and this was date and this was quantity. Now I want to make sure all these are mandatory. 
there is no way of doing that in Excel. So although there are some validations, it's a compromise whichever way you look at it. And even if it works the way you want, you're going to get multiple files. Now, yes, you can put this file on a shared drive or one drive or something like that and then give multiple people access. Fair enough, in which case people can type here itself. Same file, no copy paste. So the copy paste part gets solved, but the problem is if multiple people haven't given access to the same area, then what happens? Anybody can overwrite anybody's data. So that's a problem. Not only can people edit anybody's data, they can see each other's data. And that's usually a problem all of us have. Why? Because when you're capturing data from multiple people, you should be seeing all the data, but they should not be seeing each other's data. Maybe it's different salespeople, different regions, different product managers, different countries, different group companies, whatever. They should not see each other's data. That's another reason why you are forced to send separate files. If you want to go one step further, some people again try to do some weird compromise by saying this is region one, sheet two is region two, and then create passwords by sheet and give passwords to each other. Again, that's a shoddy way of doing it. It will work, but soon you will realize that managing those passwords, it's a nightmare. In short, for years or decades, for actually not years, whatever we have been struggling with data capture in Excel has no easy solution. And that's why LIS is the correct way to do it. Now again, some of you may be technical people. So for those who are technical, this is SharePoint list. The entire concept of SharePoint is based on a fundamental principle of list. List means something which has columns with specified type of data and lots of rows. Entire SharePoint works on lists. A document library in SharePoint is also a list. A SharePoint site is a collection of lists and so on and so forth. But that list feature never got the credit it deserves from the point of view of simple user level data capture. And that is why Microsoft enhanced it a little, branded it better. And now when you have Office 365, you go to Office 365, office.com, log in using Office 365, this on the top left corner app launcher these kind of nine dots you will see in many mobile applications nowadays the technical name for that kind of menu is called a waffle menu if you just see three horizontal lines it's a burger menu if you see three dots just three dots it's called ellipsis never mind so this is app launcher now if you go here it will show you lots of tools and then all apps and when you say all apps, you actually see what you have available and one of them is list. So that is what we are going to focus on today. So when you go to list, it will be blank. Probably you will have to create a list and then share that list with people. Then people will enter data and we need to make sure the people can't uh, see each other's data or edit or delete each other's data. All that is taken care of. But where is the data getting captured now? In some browser page. Where do you eventually want the data? In Excel. So don't worry. For data capture, we are not going to use Excel. For analysis, we are absolutely going to use Excel. Don't worry about that. So what I'm going to do now is a walkthrough of how this whole thing works. Now, if you are thinking of column level security, what I just talked about is row level security. If region one adds five rows and region two adds 20 rows, they should not see or edit each other's data. That's row level security. Some people also want column level security. That's a bit tricky. It is possible, but it is tricky. So if column level security is your primary goal, then this may not be the ideal thing. In one sentence, the solution is to create a custom view and do audience targeting in SharePoint. If you don't understand what I just said, forget it. We will see it later. Now let's create a list. What is a list? List is a list. So we have a blank list from Excel existing list. Why would you want to use an existing list? Because if you already created a list and you want another thing with the same columns, then you really reuse it. From Excel, we will see later. So why is Excel important? Because you may already be using Excel like this. We already created something in Excel 
and I want to use that for a future. For example, I already have this. In fact, it already has data also, and I want this to be the precursor of the new list I'm creating formally. That is possible, but right now let's see a blank list. Now when you go to blank list, before you go to blank list, you will see some templates. They are just for demo purpose, but if you click quickly want to see something which has data in it and uh, you want to see how it looks, then it's a good idea to go to this dialog, click on it and see what it offers. So notice this is recruitment tracker. So there is a candidate, there's some position, and then there is a progress column. It's mentioned who is the person managing this candidate and various phases, who has taken the interview, what are the notes and so on and so forth. You can also have a column which can accept files. You can have photos as well. So this you may not want to use as it is. You may requirements may be different, but what I'm asking you to do is go to this, click on each one of them, just scroll and see what it offers not from the point of view of the exact columns, but what kind of columns are supported. And for example, this is color coded. Blocked is red. Oh, that's interesting. Duplicate is yellow, so conditional formatting is available. So just by scrolling through these lists, you will get an understanding of what is possible. We will see how to actually get it done, but just to get an idea. So first step, go through these and uh, you will be able to see. For example, here we have photos which can be rendered as a part of the list. That is not possible in native Excel. Now it is possible with custom data types, but that requires a specific new version of Excel. Everyone may not have that feature. Fine, so I'm not going to use any of the existing ones. I'm going to create a blank list. So let's say live event demo. That is the list. But what is the kind of list we are going to create? It's up to you. Let's create the simplest possible list. OK, simplest possible list. So I'm going to create a list with one column and few items in it. That's it. And we will use that list for something more complex later. So let's say we are going to eventually create a list which contains some product details, but one of the columns in the product details is packaging. But the packaging has to be a drop down and I want what kind of packaging is possible to be another list. So let's create a simple list. Packaging. Description you should give in real life, but right now I will avoid that. You can have a color and you can have some random icons. Not too much of choice here, so don't bother. I'll just choose something. And then where to save it to? Notice this is very important. This is my list, which is the default place where you create it. But if you look at this, these are all the teams I have. So on the time of creation itself, it integrates with teams. So this will directly go to that particular team. Right now I'm creating it centrally. Now when I say create, it doesn't ask you how many columns you want. It just creates it. It does add a column. By default, there is always a column called title. Now what happens? I'm not going to use any other column. I'm just going to use this column called title. Fine. Now in this column, I don't want to call it title itself. I want packaging type, so I can just rename the column here. So our list is ready. How do you add an item in it? There are two methods. One by one you can add or you can add like Excel in grid view. So one by one is boring. Right now there is only one item here. So there is only one text box. If there were multiple columns, each column here will become a separate text box like a form. So right now I'm just going to add say box is one kind of packaging. Now I want to add another one, another one. I don't want to waste time clicking on new again, typing, clicking on save. So go to grid view. OK, this is better. 
So now like Excel, I can type here. So whatever. Now what else? This is done. So this is a list as simple as that. Now this list can be used in another list, which is what we will see next. But while we are here, let's just get the hang of a list anatomy. So this you already saw. I am in grid view now, so I finished editing. I can say exit grid view. Oh, then I said, oh, there is a spelling mistake. What do I do now? What do I do now? I can always go and edit it in the same grid view or one by one or whatever it is. So I'll intentionally make a mistake. And then I'll say exit grid view. Then I'll go again. Notice when I click directly without saying edit in grid view, what happened? It's not in edit mode any longer. Of course I can edit from here also. What am I editing now? This part, so done. Now remember, this is SharePoint. So many features which you expect in SharePoint are all available here. So you see here, what do we have? If you go to a document library, you can see open the document, version history, all of that is available here. So this is just a one column list, but there is a version history even for that. So notice whatever I just did, there is a proper nice audit trail. Imagine doing that in Excel. Nowadays in Excel browser version, this is available, but this is much more precise with and more convenient. So that's done. Now let's go to list again. Let's create another list. So let's say demo products. OK. So now what do we have? Another list. Let's make it. Red and color create. Now this time we are going to create a more. Detailed list. First of all, this title column is always there. You can't really delete it, so it's a good idea to just rename it to one of the text columns you will need anyway as a part of your list. OK, so title I'm going to call it product. Done. Now what? Now I need more columns. So remember in Excel, what kind of data we can capture. We just saw that from a validation point of view. We have numbers, we have text and we have date. Three types basically. Actually, technically speaking, date is also a number, but never mind. Three types, but now look at this. This is very significant. What are the different types? So single line of text, that's easy. Simple text box. Sometimes we want longer text description, summary of your CV, comment, something like that or summary of an interview you have taken, negotiation details, whatever. Multiple lines of text. Then of course we have very nice location that can capture location from the device. This works on mobile also by the way. It's a browser based application. Number of course, yes, no, which is specifically like a checkbox person. This is very important because you may want to say this product is going to be packaged by this person or shipped to, to that person, something like that. These person things come from your Active Directory. So this is Office 365. So all your staff will have a user ID, so you can choose one more person from your company. Date time is obvious, but it gives you a nice drop down which Excel doesn't give. Choice, yes, that is what we will use for packaging. And then hyperlink, which is another nice touch. Currency, if you specifically want something, image, very useful, and more. So let's go to more. So this is a more comprehensive dialogue. Most of this we have already covered, that more has one more option called lookup. Ah, so that is what we wanted. So lookup is look at the information which is already there, and we will call it package. OK, now where is this going to come from? Get information from and we have packaging which we just did. And in packaging, what are the columns? Technically, 
there could be multiple columns, but we have just created one column. But remember behind the scenes it has other columns. Practically speaking, we just had the default title column. We renamed it and that's it. And never mind. So these are behind the scenes. You can of course access them, so I will just use this. one. Do you want to allow multiple values? No. Add a column to show each of these additional fields. If you want, if there were other columns and just for reference, you wanted to add some other column so that people know they have selected the right one. You could have added, but right now we don't need that. Then column formatting. We can do very sophisticated column formatting, but for that you will need to look at and learn a little bit of JSON, but let's not go there right now. So that's all. Notice there is one very, very important thing here. Do you want this column to have unique values, which is very difficult or impossible to do in Excel? And most important, this column is mandatory. So in our case, yes, this column is mandatory. Done. So now we have added a column. Package type. Now let's add another column for quantity. So this is quantity, simple number. What kind of number if you want, you can get currencies, preview, how many decimal places, zero, default value, no. If you want, you can use a calculated value. That is generally based on some other columns we have. We have not yet got any numeric columns, so no point. Basically, you can put a calculation there. More options. What is the most important option you have to think of for every column? At least, is it mandatory or not? And then forget the content types part right now. And here we have some kind of column validation and you can put a normal formula here. The syntax is similar to Excel. It's a good idea to go and look at it once, but right now we are not going to have. So this is similar to Excel validation, but more sophisticated. OK, done. So we have one more column added. Now we can go on and on, but I am not going to go there, but let's for the time being add something which is commonly not used in Excel context. So image is one useful thing. Others are fairly self-explanatory. So image. Okay. What is the type? Image. More options. Column required. Yes. And save. And just to show you, we already have chosen a choice type of column, but how do you add a column directly which is of type choice. This is a very interesting one visually also appealing. So status. Now this is a choice. Choice means there are choices. People can or cannot add other choices. Default value more options. Now because it's choice, let's first put some choices here. You can just go here and rename it. Three are default. You can add more. So let's say status. One is cancelled, one is shipped. Something like that. Now, as soon as someone adds it, we want not started to be the default. OK, done. Now cancelled should not be blue in color. I want to change the color. That's why there is a color palette here. So I'm going to choose this. <coughs> this one has not started, so we will not give it red color. It just indicates something bad. So not started is gray. Fine. Users can't add values manually. Now this is important. Is it a drop down or radio button? When you are putting a grid type of entry, drop down is better. And if you wanted multiple choices, you could have given. This is again impossible to do properly in Excel, but we will not do that right now and we will just use this. Enforce unique values, no. Column validation right now, no. Done. So that is how the whole thing is as of now. So let's say we are happy with this. And now we want to do something. Let's add some entry. We will see both types of entry. 
One is simple form like entry one at a time. This should be used when the data entry volume is less. Where you want to see it like a form. So let's say product is let's say what masks. Package type notice it gives you all this comes in a box quantity 244. If I want I can upload an image. Now let's see what kind of images are supported. So. I'm just going to put some logo. I'm trying to put Outlook logo. Let's see if it understands SVG. All this done. If I wanted to, I could have added an attachment as well. One or more, but right now I'm not. Done. Notice it is trying to show me the logo. There is something spoiled in the logo. Let me edit it. How do we edit it? Multiple ways. Just click on it. It goes into view mode. From here I can say edit or I can click here three dots and say edit or I can say edit in grid view or I can select it and say edit from here. So many ways of doing the same thing. So now this one I want to delete and add another image. So let's do that. Let's use list PNG. Okay. Done. So one entry done. Now all this is easy. Let's try grid view. Now grid view what happens if there's some validation when you when you press enter it is going to look at the validation. For example, product I'm now going to say glows. Or let's say sanitizer. And this comes as what? Now notice earlier I was in normal edit view. Now I'm in grid view. So of course there is a drop down and it shows all this. So I say box, metal, no, tube. All right. Then quantity and then product photo. Now see here I can't upload because it's grid view. And now I'm going to be stuck. Why? Because because if I go to the next item, it says sorry, this field is mandatory. Now what do I do? I am stuck. So what do I do now? I can't do anything, so I'll have to discard this item, go and do it again. So these are practical things you have to take into account. Never mind. For the time being, what I'll try to do and salvage the situation is make this column non mandatory and let's see if it understands it live. It does, but anyway, the data is gone. So now notice package type, all that we already got. Some number. This cell is read only, but now it's not mandatory, so it's OK. This order is also let's say in progress just to do something different. So when you press tab, it's going to run the validation and that is the time the row is going to get saved. So this is easy, no brainer. Now when I say exit grid view, notice what happens. It is showing me this. At this stage now, I can go edit this and upload the picture which I could not do otherwise. So let me do that. I'm just going to put one drive logo here. Done. Now, while all this is happening, this is the standard view. What is a view? View is a way of looking at your list. The default view is called all items. I don't want to select anything, so all items. This is the views. This is a standard list. This is a compact list. It's the same thing. Right now there was not much difference because there is nothing which is a lengthy column which is going across multiple lines but it shrinks it a little and gallery is like this where the picture gets priority and it looks nice. But if you want, you can. Uh, you can. You can do what you can create a custom view exactly the way you want. Fair enough. Now let's go back to all items view, which is the list view. I can create other things also. In fact, I want to add one more column just for one other purpose called date and time. And. A deadline for shipment. Is it date or time? Date and time. Do you want to include time? No. Friendly format. Yes. Default value. Today's date. 
no calculated value and just let's leave it at that. So now if I want to add deadline, I want to do that for both of them. So I'm going to go here in the deadline one. It nicely comes as a proper calendar item. And we are done. Exit edit view. So far so good. Now I want multiple people to add data here. So like everything else in Office 365, whether it's a document, one note notebook or a team, you can share stuff. So share from here itself. There's a simpler version of the share dialogue. If you remember in Office tools, when there is a share dialogue, it is a more complex thing. Typically it asks you various types of questions when you share a document which is stored on OneDrive or SharePoint or anywhere in Office 365. This is the share dialogue because it's a document and there is more complexity or more flexibility involved. This is just a simple list. Here we get multiple options. Typically we use specific people, choose whether to allow editing or not, choose whether to allow download or not, things like that. But list is a comparatively simpler animal. So what is it asking? Who should be able to do this. So I'm going to add Shesham, who is my colleague, who is on the call, and I will also add one more demo user called assistant. And then what? Here we can choose what kind of control they get. So maybe my boss also should have access to it, but boss just wants to see. Now either I can choose edit or I can say view. So if you want to give view permissions to some people and edit permission to some people, you'll have to come here twice. So right now let's finish the edit part. So third permission, edit means edit obviously, view means can't edit, full control means what? You can control everything which I just said, so you are like the owner of the list. Right now I created, I'm the owner, but I can make other people the owner, so they can change the security, they can customize many other things. Right now I'll just give them edit message and notify people, yes, they will get a mail. That's all there is to it. No file was sent, a simple link was sent to people. Now obviously you are going to use this. This is very useful. You will have many lists and very soon you will forget whom have I shared this list with, obviously. So before we go and see how sharing happens, let us see how to remind yourself and control that sharing in the long run. How do we do that? Again go to share. This time I have not come here to share. This time I have come here to remind myself as to whom have I shared it with. So three dots remember means more options. Manage access and here it actually shows you who has this access. My name comes twice because I'm also the global admin, but never mind that. So now here this means owner. I am the owner and I have full control. This one is edit and this is can view done. Now of course I could have seen all this from where else I could have gone here. This is called open the details pane. So this actually shows you the access and there is more details which shows you some audit trail kind of thing also right here. Very good. So from here also I can go to manage access and eventually land there only. If you have created a sharing link, it will appear here. If you want to get rid of the link so that it no longer works, you can just remove it from here. But this is a direct access I'm given. Never mind. So now let's see what happens on the other side. So Shesham is already probably doing the data entry, but I have this guy assistant here. So this is the mailbox of assistant. You go there and look at what happened. Got a mail. Looks at this. This should have been a list logo. This is SharePoint. Never mind. Work in progress at Microsoft level. Open it. Obviously, it's going to open it on browser. There is no application associated with it. Now we have a problem. What is the problem? I don't want this guy assistant to see other people's data. That's a really bad idea. So how do I manage that? The data entry part is exactly the same as what I've told you, but I don't want this at all. So what do I do now? So let's come back to the list first and solve that problem. 
because if there was no security, people are not going to use this product. But fortunately, there is security. Wheel min settings. List settings. Fortunately, there's only one option. Typically in SharePoint, there'll be seven more options. They have simplified it. Now this is a very scary looking dialogue. Don't worry. You don't have to go to all of them. You just have to go to one item which is called advanced settings. Advanced settings. Generally people get put off by the word advanced. Advanced means more useful features. That's all. So don't worry about that part. In advanced setting again, there is a long list of things. Don't bother. All that we are interested in is this read access. Who can read? Items. Everyone can read all items. Sorry. I just want to make people read items which they created. And same thing for create and edit. Done. That's all. So the two clicks and you're good to go. Make sure to click OK here, otherwise it does not get saved. So what did I do? I implemented security. Now how do I come back? This is settings. This is previous level, which is products. So click on this. Then you're back. Nothing has changed here. But now when I go to assistant, that person has already got the link by the way. I'm open that mail was already open. So clicked on that. Now notice what happened. There are two records. We can see that, but this guy can't see it. So now as assistant, I am editing to save time. I'm just going to put it in grid view. And let's say. Glows package type. I press the wrong key. Edit in grid view. Package type. Package type was. OK, let's go to another list and try it out. So I already have a similar list somewhere. We will use that. I have not encountered this error earlier. No time, no point in testing it out right now. So here is another list which is already shared with those people. Similar one product quantity, packaging, status, date, all that. What is the sharing here? Let's try that again. I have list settings. Advanced, you know the story now. Right, read access, read access, done. Now, coming back, data entry, whom have I shared it with? How do I know that? Click here, these are the people. Nathan, boss, Shesham, assistant, already shared data entry. So now, let's go as assistant and look at that data entry list. Now, when I go to list as another user, what do I see? I see the lists which are shared with me. So this is another one which was shared. So notice, although as Nitin, when I went, there are many records. What is happening here? As assistant, I am only able to see the records I have added. And the same thing will happen for Chesham. So that is called row level security. You can choose the person. They can see their data job done. So that takes care of the security part of the list. Now assume this is done and all good. Now what is the next step? People are going to continue to add data. Now depending on the volume of data entry, maybe people want to go to grid view and they already have an Excel file and they don't want to the comma of the columns are matching. You can actually copy paste from Excel also in the grid view to simplify this process. Now while you are doing editing, if you do a mistake in while editing, before you say exit, there is 100 levels of undo as well available here. So if you make a mistake and realize it in the same edit session later on, you can potentially undo. So that's a new feature which was recently added. Now mind, now let's come back and assume data is getting captured nicely. So that part is now beautifully done without the 
limitations and problems associated with Excel file security passwords and finally too much of manual copy paste. So now when people are adding data, what happens? So let's try to add some entry from assistant anyway. Add new item. So let's say let's call it live event just to. One one one. What kind of item I want to add? Spray OK. What is the status? Cancel. What is the date? Whatever is the data? Something like that. This tab, make sure it is saved. Now this live event was added by assistant. Now when I come to Nitin, Nitin, see whatever happens is live. I didn't even say refresh it, so this is live. All good. Now notice what has happened here. There is some icon here. What does that mean? There is a share button here and there is an icon. So you can actually add comments also to individual items and this can be very useful. Uh, when multiple people are working on the same list and so on. So that's one feature. Second is share. What is this? The same share button. But available everywhere. So manage access same story. Same thing now here there is a link giving access. I can share from here control the access. We have seen that. But now having done all this, I want to know who edited this because I don't seem to be getting that name of the person here. So what do I do? I want to see who has edited this. So I just want to have an extra column here, but I don't want to add a column. Why? If I go to more, what is it asking me to do is asking me to add a new column. Do I really want to add a new column? No. Already there is a column because obviously it is controlling security, so it knows who is added. I want that existing column to be visible here. How do we do that? You again go to settings. Settings list settings. We have gone there before and we have gone to advanced settings, but if you just scroll down, it actually shows what are the columns currently visible. So title is visible. Whatever columns we have specified are visible, but there is a created and modified by which is not visible, but there doesn't seem to be a checkbox here so that I can do something. But remember, how did we come here? We were in a view called all items. So what are we actually doing? Data entry settings, all items view. So this is just a list of what is visible in the all items view. Don't worry, scroll down. What is this now? This is the all item view. This is the default view. It will be visible on mobile and this is also the default mobile view. So if you go on a browser, this is the default view. Technically you can have a different kind of view for mobile because mobile has less space. That's a very nice touch. So you create a new view and set it that one as the default mobile view. But right now we are not creating a new view. I just want to customize this view. So I click on all items. That's a hyperlink. It should have been blue in color, but never mind. Now actually we get to see many more columns. So behind the scenes when you created just quantity packaging and four items, whatever five, one was actually the title which we renamed as product. Now remember in brackets that is called link to edit item. So this you can't really hide because that is the guy on which when you click you will get the edit option. So you repurpose it title rename it and repurpose it with some text item. Having done that now so many things are available here. Now I'm not going to go into all of them, but just remember why these things are there because this is corporate data. So a lot of things which you otherwise may not be aware of from a security and compliance point of view are actually behind the scenes being tracked and taken care of. So without going into too much of detail, if it's a record, then you will want to retain it for X number of years or there may be label. Label are called sensitivity labels, confidential, top secret, those kind of things which will actually encrypt the data, control, control who can access it and so on and so forth. Very nice, but right now we'll just use modified by. That's it. We could have used more, but 
right now one is enough. So we say modified by. Now what do we do again? You have to go and choose save. We'll skip the other options and then we have done our job. So notice modified by was added. Another very nice touch here is very often we add columns and then realize oh that column should have been before this column. Absolutely painful to do in Excel. Here at any point of time you can drag columns. So this is another very good touch. Now who am I? The owner of the list. This is assistant. Assistant also can change the columns. OK, now if assistant shares or refreshes this, notice what happened. What takes precedence? The base one. So if as assistant, I change and put status first, then quantity, then packaging. Now I see it as Nitin and I refresh. What is going to happen? Nothing. So the control, that is the difference between an editor and an owner. If I was the owner, then it will affect everyone. So that's how it is. So it's packaging quantity status date. So if now this guy has done it for the time being. Next time this person refreshes. It's back to square one. Now technically you can create a new view as a user also. So I can create a new view for myself and if I want to I can make it a public view, but let's not go there right now. So come back. Now what has happened? I know who has done what and here Shesham has added some assistant has added some and so on. So now notice one more nice thing here. What happened here is originally when I created this list, I did not make the date mandatory. Later on I got a brainwave and said no, no date should be mandatory, but this entry was already done. So now it can't go and delete that entry, but it needs to attract my attention saying something is wrong there. A mandatory column has not been filled. So this is a very nice touch. Now this may be a long list and you may have some items which have a problem. How do you identify those problems? You see this icon, this icon, this icon or this, but they may be scattered across thousands of rows. So when you go to all items, notice items that need attention is a special filter. So this will only highlight items which require some repair or some default values missing or some validation failing, something like that. So that is item needing attention and there is a red dot there. Now if I go to a standard list also that red dot, if I go to standard list and remove this, this is a toggle, this will show me regular list, right? All items. Even if I go to all items, it is going to show me that red dot till I manage the show. So never mind. Now let's manage that anyway. All items, list, and all items. You see, so even if I have not noticed that there is something requiring, that red dot means you need to do something. So anyway, I have identified that item. I will edit it quickly. I could have edited in many different ways. What did I do? I clicked here. So what? where did it go? It did not go to edit. It went to what? It went to details. No, that's not what I want. So first identify it and then say edit. So I'm showing you how to export it to Excel. Even though the my icon is Excel, when you say export to Excel, what you get as download is not an Excel file and that's very important to understand. Many people get confused. Say I wanted an Excel file. Think Microsoft knows what you want better than you know because if this was an Excel file, it would be a snapshot of the current state of data. Sooner or later something is going to change in the data. Are you going to keep downloading again and again? That's back to square one. We were sending attachments. People were sending files back and you were wasting your life copying and pasting. We never want to do it again. That's why this is not an Excel file, but it's a file called IQI, Internet Query File. Don't worry about it. And Excel understands how to open this file. So when you click on it, it is still going to open Excel. Now because this file is essentially coming from browser or internet, it will give you this warning. That's OK. 
And now it will ask you a very important question. What do you want to do with it? It's telling you I will give you the data. Don't worry. The data will not be a snapshot. By the way, the good news is this data is linked to the list. So even if it's in Excel, we can refresh it. But how do you want it in Excel? That's the question it is asking. So. Table means it will just be the raw data as you are seeing it here. It will be visible in Excel. That's all. But very often. We do that. We get Excel files. We have the data and then we create a pivot table. Why do we do that? Because our method of capturing data itself was Excel. But now our data capture doesn't require Excel at all. So if you choose table, notice what is going to happen. I will show you all the options, but just to understand which one to use. So I did that. What did I get? I got this data. This is of course a table. And the data has come here. Very nice. All good. Question is that data is already there. Do you really want to see the raw data or you want to analyze it? That is your decision. That depends on the situation. What are you trying to do with that data in Excel? For whatever reason you want to see it, by all means you see it. Not only maybe you want to see it, but you want to do some calculations on it. That's a very good reason. If you just want to see it, it's there on browser. What's the point in having a copy here? Doesn't serve much purpose. But suppose I want to do something like there is quantity column and I want to say 10% of quantity. Now notice this is a table. Now I'm adding a column here. I am adding a column called percentage. Ah. Now can I put a formula here? Yes, of course I can put a formula. This is a table, so all of us know how to use a table. The column is called quantity, so I could have gone and click there or place left arrow, left arrow, but you know the story now. It automatically gives you this syntax. So if you are in a table, press equal to to start the formula square bracket. It will actually show you all the items which are there. You have to close the bracket and multiply it by whatever one percent, whatever it is. So. Notice what is it saying? Quantity is a whole column. It's saying, do you want the whole column? No, actually I want the current row. So current row is indicated by the at the rate sign. So that at the rate sign you have to type. Just to clarify that again, when I'm entering the data, notice no, when I'm entering a formula in a table, you can enter the formula anywhere by the way, equal to square bracket. Notice the first thing there is this row which you miss typically. So you say this row, it will continue to show the columns and now say quantity. So quantity from this row and we want say 10% of it. Whatever we got that. Now what is the problem here? The problem is, is this column available in our list in the browser? No, this browser has no idea what happened here. Even if I refresh, Excel is not going to tell this guy anything. So I don't have that column at all. So now let me add a new item and see what happens. I'm going to add a new item in grid view. It doesn't matter what else is there. We'll just take something. Let's make it 7 7. Let's say shift. And today's date. Modified by is read only because that this guy will automatically manage. Done. Now this new item sashay whatever whatever is it going to be visible in Excel? That's number one question. Second, even if that is available in Excel, the calculated column is not available here. So what happens to my calculated column? Question two. So let's answer both questions. Now this guy has no idea what has happened there. So how do I do when you don't know anything? Right click and hope that there is the relevant feature there and that's all you have to do. So it came here, of course, beautifully done. So it's a one way sync. What happened to my column? My column is surviving and it also copied the formula. So that's called best of both worlds. Maybe this was a discretionary number. You wanted to give discount to customers and you don't want the people who are adding the data to see the discount. 
This is the way to do it. You just want total control over the list locally, but it is still refreshing. Now while we are there, I want this list to refresh. Of course I can right click refresh, but suppose tomorrow I open it. I forget to refresh. It's outdated. What do I do now? So what do we do? Get data from sheet. No. Where do we go? This is a table, right? So go to table. In table, what do we have? There is a refresh button, but this is manual refresh. I go to connection properties and here I have refresh data when opening the file. Very nice feature. What does that mean practically now? When you create a list, it's empty. When you create a list and share it with people, security, all that you know. When are you going to create the connection to Excel? Just after you created that list, might as well finish export to Excel, IQI, come to this. It will be empty, doesn't matter. It will show you column headings. At that point itself, change this setting to refresh and open. So next time as and when people are adding data, anytime you open the Excel file, you will always see latest situation of the data. That's number one. Another scenario for refresh is that you are actually adding data. Lots of people adding data. Lots of new data is coming and you want to see the live picture of it. Refresh data when open will only work when exactly when you're opening the file. You have kept the file open. People are adding data live. That is not going to happen here. So refresh every n minutes is not available here. This can be available for other things, but that option is not available here. So you have to keep on refreshing. Never mind. So this is how you get live data in Excel. So once you create the list and link it to Excel through that IQI file, then you don't have to go to that list at all unless you want to change something in the list. Fair enough, but now let's close this file. I'm not going to save this file. Why am I not doing that? Because when you are exporting data, let's assume you don't want to manually change anything in the data. You want to create a report. Again, we will not do this because in my downloads that earlier Excel file must be already there. Oh, never mind. We'll do that Excel workbook. IQI. Open the file. This will create another new Excel file by the way. Because earlier file I did not. Now notice what is happening. What do you want? A pivot table. Of course you could have created a chart, but generally it's more comfortable to create a report and then a chart. Anyway, of course standard options here. New worksheet, new workbook. Let's say new workbook here itself in properties. Actually, while you are doing the whole story, you could have had done refresh data on open. Fine, let's do that anyway. And now we'll say pivot table. So I'll create a new file, add a sheet, and create a nice little pivot table here. So just for the demo purpose, I'll put quantity here. This will give me total quantity, and I also want to see how many items have been added total. So I'll just go and say summarize by count. So we have a simple pivot table here which shows total and count. Uh, just for demo purpose, let's create another pivot table here, which is as of now it is a copy, but let's say different packaging and what is what? Easy. Now notice I copied this pivot table and then these two pivot tables are put internally sharing the same cache. So when it comes to refresh, I can refresh either of the pivot table, the other one will get refreshed. OK, so far so good. Now let's see this in action. Now let's go back to data and add some items, edit some items. So this 77 which was here, let me edit. How do you edit? Exit grid view. Go to a particular item, either in edit grid view or in edit one by one, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I'm just going to add some bigger numbers so that our data or pivot table gets refreshed and let's add one more item. Demo. 
This time we'll use spray. Just to identify this item 999. Let's call it cancelled. Done. And this is read only. Press tab, save it. Now when you come back, obviously pivot table needs a refresh. There is no auto refresh in that sense. Of course, pivot table also has options. Pivot table also has something called data source. So change data source. And here also we have that data connection. This is the connection it is using. And if you open this connection from here, the same thing. Now right click and what? Refresh 16 becomes 17. Everything changes. Life is good. So this is the entire life cycle of starting from scratch. Sharing the list with people and then getting a live report. But this is just the beginning. Now where else can we use this? Very important question because remember this is a part of what? This is a part of Office 365. So wherever it makes sense, it will be used. What does that mean? That means the most important place you should be thinking of is Teams. Why is that important? Because Teams is for teamwork. So if I already have a team, I already have a team. So Teams as chat for ad hoc short term work and Teams as teams for more structured project management, long term work. More involved work, so we have team, we have channels. Different channels, how many you create up to you. What do you have in channels? You have discussion, we have files and anything else you need to do that teamwork effectively. We can add by clicking on this tab. So obviously. Needless to say list is available here, so now if I go to list, you know what to do already. <laughs> Adding list, OK. So this is adding an application called list right now. So now it is saying you want to create a list or create an existing list. Oh. So what do we have? We have some lists. Which list? If you had a link, if you already created a list and we have the link, you could have done that also. So you can create a list or use existing one. Let's create a list just to show you the process here. Exactly the same interface. So now let's say I'm trying to do it from an existing list. And what is the list? Now notice why am I not getting the list I just created? The demo and data entry list or whatever we were using. Which was the list we were using? The list called data entry. Why am I not seeing it? Because of the simple reason this is teams in the context of another user called assistant. So assistant is not the owner of that data entry list. That's why he or she is not able to see it. Assistant has created some list before, so that is visible here. So I can reuse my list, create a list. This name already exists, never mind. And now what happened? I added the list. I can customize it further. I already have the data title, age, gender, whatever. But the important part is. Where is this list in a team? So where is the share button? There is no share button because it implicitly got shared with all the members of this team. So if I go to manage team, I know what is who are the members. Whoever are the members automatically and implicitly have edit access to that list, but now if you want that security stuff to be done, then you have a problem because right now that is not visible. So where is that list which we just created? In that list, if I want something to be done, I forgot where it was. Which channel was it? Oh, this one. Now I want to change that security part. Where do I go? I have this here. I have export. I have all items. Nothing. So there you will have to go to SharePoint and customize it. That is the problem. But the functionality is very much there. So that is about list. The other part of list which also integrates with something else. 
when someone adds an item there, you may want something to happen automatically. That can happen using Power Automate. And you don't have to go to Power Automate. You go to your list. So this is our list. And let's say as soon as an entry is added, something has to happen. That's the workflow. So how do I do that? You say Automate. When you say Automate, there are two types of Automate, by the way. Set a reminder. OK, create a rule. This is native to list, so let's see what can be done here. Shesham, how many questions do we have? Uh, we have quite a few questions, around 30. OK, so after this, I will summarize and finish. We'll need time for questions as well. So I don't know why this guy is not working. So what this guy essentially shows is this. I have a screenshot to save time. I will show you the screenshot. When you say create rule, it actually shows you this. Notify me when any of these things happen. So very simplistic event based notification. OK, easy. But there is more. What else? Automate. Manage rules, create a rule. Now we are actually there. So these are simple. And a column value changes when a column changes when an item is added. So let's say when a new item is created. Send an email to and me. Done. That's all. Very easy. But this is not all. This is just a very primitive notification. The automate part is just a very small part of automation. The real part comes here. This is Power Automate and now I say create a flow or see your flows. Obviously, I have not created any flows. So in the context of this particular one, so it's just going to show me other flows. So I go here Power Automate create a flow. So now it's not saying OK, create a flow from scratch. It's saying ah, there are a lot of flows which are already created. These are templates. So what do you want to do? For example, send a mail when a new item is added. Now here it says SharePoint list instead of lists because as I told you, this is not a new feature. It was called a SharePoint list earlier. So when you go to Power Automate, don't look for the list icon. Look for the SharePoint icon. List icon is not yet integrated. So wherever you see SharePoint icon, list context, this will work. So these are ready made templates. You can even have approval. So this may be requisition of some asset or some approval for person agreeing to interview someone, whatever it is. Approval, right? Serial parallel approvals show more. You can even create an outlook task when something is added or the tweets is not here. This is now. List is becoming a target, so we have to look at what is the trigger. Trigger is SharePoint, so wherever SharePoint is first. That we have to look at. This is reverse. This is SharePoint. For a new SharePoint item, it integrates with all kinds of third party products, so the trigger will be the list. Action can happen in 300, 400 different products, including lots of non Microsoft products, so it integrates with Slack, Trello, whatever and so on and so forth. So explore those for the time being. I am just going to look at. Um, customize email when a new SharePoint item is added. Now when you go there, it shows you the components of this workflow. SharePoint is the trigger and when something happens here, the action happens in Office 365 Outlook. So you just look at it. It will automatically pick up your login if it says Try it out. Some error comes. You click on that. Now it is using this template to create the flow. Flow is a step by step process starting with a trigger. This is a pre created template, so a lot of work will already have been done for you. So it actually is showing you the flow which is already created, but this is by default. You'll have to specify whose email ID, what to put there, so on. 
So OK, no problem. We say edit. Now this is the flow. When a new item is created, find out who you are because you may want to send a mail to yourself, so it needs your email ID and then send email. Fair enough. So when a new item is created, where? So here it is showing me all the lists I have created. Remember we created packaging today. We created demo products, all that. In this case, we are going to use the data entry list done. Now get my profile. It just gets a profile. There are no parameters here. Of course, you can have advanced options list columns by view. So remember views. You could have chosen different views and it would have shown different columns. So right now we are going to choose all items view. And then this is the actual action. Right now it is saying only send a mail. Fine. What is the mail to whom? Where is this coming from? It I don't want to hard code an email ID because someone else in my team also may be using this workflow. So whoever is the currently logged on user that person, but here I don't want to do that, so I want to show you how to do this. So when you say two, if you want to hard code, I can just do that. But I also want to pick up whoever is the current person who created that item. That is where it found my profile because who is adding the item that person? Ah. So now how do I get that person's mail here? Get my profile. We did to get the email ID on that person. OK, so now new items added. What? For what? The list. What is the list? I don't want to hard code the name of the list also. Ah, so I get the title of the list also here like that all kinds of things which are coming from our columns which we have created, right? So for the timing, I'll just put quantity here. So what happens now? Quantity. I could have put any other thing there as well. So done. Now it has already done the job. New item was added. This is a function. What is this function doing? It's creating created by whom, uh, modified at what time, but I want to put some additional stuff. So I say what was that packaging? Which was a specific item. In my newly added item, how do I do that? I will go here and I will see. I don't want to see functions. I want to see expressions. So dynamic content. Where does that come from? We have two steps above. One step is called get profile. One step is called new item is added. Look at this. This is green. This is red. So all the parameters which come from this will be in the red color. All the parameters which come from here will be green color. So these are red. No, it also shows you the logo to tell you ah, these are SharePoint items. OK, so now what was the thing we were talking about? Packaging. So like that I can actually compose a proper mail. In addition to that, I want to expand this template and say I want to put a message in some teams also just for demo purpose. So these are different places where you can do all kinds of actions. So after sending a mail, I also want to put something in teams. OK, no problem. So this is called actions. Look at the amount of items or products which are available where you could have done this action. Is a very, very long list of hundreds of non Microsoft and Microsoft tools. So for the time being, you can just choose teams. But technically you could have tweeted this automatically if you wanted. So what do I want to do? Do I want to add a member? Do I want to get a message? So these are actions I can potentially do in that team. So now I just want to post a message. OK, so now it's logging into teams just to get to know which teams I have access to. So post as flow bot because that's going to happen automatically. That's fine. Or what else? Me, who is the user? OK, and then channel. I want to put it in channel. Channel is a part of what? It's a part of teams. Which are the teams we have? We have lots of teams here. So I'm going to use a team which we just saw called procurement. And I'm going to use a channel called RFP for AI systems. 
and here I can just compose any message. So I'm just going to put quantity colon. And you know how to do that. We know there will be something in the dynamic content called quantity. If you wanted to, you could have also put something else. And search for it, scroll, whatever. Done. So now our flow is ready. Save it. It's a good idea as soon as you save it. Save it, but this name is a very long name, so list automation. I renamed it. OK, no problem. Whatever it is, save. There is a flow checker which automatically checks if there is any error. If no error, then it will be creeping quiet. If there's an error, there will be a red dot which will appear there. So it's a good idea to check if there is any problem. And now we have to test it. How do I test it? Manually or automatically add a new item to list. OK, test. Now it is waiting. Have I added a column? No. Have I added a new item? No. So let's add a new item. So let's call this flow test. And just for demo purpose, we'll add a number or quantity which is unique. So we understand it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what else? Done. So now we'll come back to this guy. So notice this thing called test is running and it's saying yes, the test ran properly. All good. It created, it's created, it's created, it sent his mail. If you want to troubleshoot, you can go here and actually check what mail was sent. It will show where the mail was sent. This was hard coded. This is the person who added it. So all that has already been done. So if I now go as assistant, because I had added this person's name hard coded, you see new item added notification automatically came. Details have come all that. The quantity has come and so on. And just to complete the picture, we had also added something here. So when I go to RFP, it's actually showing me this. Perfectly done. So that in a nutshell is list. So we will take questions now, but before that couple of things. Uh, we want your feedback and there is a lucky draw, so. Shesham, just uh, do that part. Yes, we shall share the link for the feedback in the Q&A panel. Please do click on the link and give us your feedback about the session. And uh, I've also published a masterclass on Office 365. It's for understanding how to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote effectively on a site called Social Swag. So if you want, you can subscribe to it. The link for that also Shesham will post. Now, when you are filling the feedback form, very important, there is a name field. Put the field because what I'm going to do after you finished filling the feedback, I'm going to download the data. We will have multiple rows and we will have a row number. I'm going to do a lucky draw by generating a random number and whosoever row comes as lucky draw, those two people will get the thousand rupees voucher. So make sure you put your name there. Don't put your email ID because the names will be visible publicly. Once I announce the winners, then you can send the email ID to us directly or you can post it privately in the Q&A. For now, while filling the feedback, just mention your name. OK, with that, let's take questions. Yes, Shesham, go ahead. We have okay. 10 minutes so with 30 questions. I don't think we'll finish in 10 minutes, but this is getting recorded, so if I exceed, I will try to finish all questions. So if you have time, stay on. If you have to go at 4.30, no problem. This video will be edited, cleaned, and uploaded on YouTube for everyone to see very soon. So if you have to go, you will still not miss anything. Yes, Shesham, go ahead. 
Uh, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, the first question is, is list available in all O365 licenses? Yes. The next question is, if it is from data collection point, how do we differentiate between forms and lists? Forms is similar in that sense, but forms is more for surveys. Lists is more for proper data capture the way we do in Excel. The simple answer is if you wanted to capture data from people, would you have sent them forms? No. Form can only be filled as a form. List can be filled like a grid. That's primarily the difference. Number one. Second, when you go to forms, the kind of fields which are available in forms are optimized for surveys, not for capturing business data. So when I go to a new form, what happens? I do get uh, ability to define various data types. Yes, but what do I get? Some of them are common, but I get rating. I get date and these Likert, for example, net promoter score are very specific to. Survey related functionality, so Likert means what I'll get an array like this. So content uh, relevance to my job, quality of delivery, and then option one, bad, good, ugly, whatever. That's called a Likert. What is net promoter score? Net promoter score is those irritating questions we typically get in formal surveys. What is the likelihood of one to ten? Those kind of things. So this is more optimized for surveys, and it has to be filled like a form. That's the difference. The next question is, can we import data in list from Excel? Yes, you can. So if you already have something in Excel. So let's try that. Let's say I have some data in Excel. I'll take a small example just to save time and uh, try to demonstrate. So let's create a file. I'll use a new file. Put some data. Paste it as values with formatting for the time being. Create a table out of it. Save it as something on OneDrive. I'll call it list input just so that I remember it. Now what happens? I go to list. And in lists, it does ask me, do you want to create a list which is from Excel? So let's do that part. List, new list from Excel. So now it says, where is that file? Choose a file from your OneDrive. Very good. What was the file we just created? List input. Done. Obviously, it has to be a table, otherwise it gets confused. All the you know why tables are important. If you don't know why tables are important, Shesham put the link to the uh, blog item Excel tables knowledge pack. If you are using Excel without tables, you are misusing Excel. So anyway, this is showing something. Now also notice it is trying to decipher what kind of data it is. So in case sometimes it gets mistake, for example, some column in Excel, there is nothing. Notice what is happening here. There is actually date and time. Now it understood because internally Excel stores numbers instead of dates. So that kind of stuff can be done here. Very good. Now we say next and then say list created from Excel. That's it. You are good to go. Now there is data also in the list. So it will do the job, get the data and then you can customize the list using list features here and so on. Next. OK, the next question is while importing Excel file, it gives an error because of the title column. How to remove this? There may be some reserved words where those names are clashing with SharePoint requirements. Just change the column name before import. 
OK, the next question is which method is better? Enter with grid view or other method? If the volume of data you are entering is just single item and there are lots of columns, then you want to see them nicely. Then form, which is basically new, is better. If you are entering multiple items and you want the comfort of Excel kind of data entry, then grid view is better. What's the limit in characters for single line and multiple line? I think single line is 255, multiple lines I don't remember. Let me see. Whatever. So let me put a very large number. That's the best way to find limits. Put an abnormally large number. So that was single line of text. What is the other one? Multiple lines of text. More options. Multiple lines of text. No limit. There must be a limit, but. Never mind. It's not a character limit. Next. How many rows and columns can we add? Is there any limitation with respect to permissions or inheritance? No, there is no limit. Whatever SharePoint limit. So if you exactly want to show, learn about how many rows, SharePoint lists. Basically, it's a SharePoint list. Whatever are the limits of SharePoint list? That number keeps changing. So just go and look at the current state. Next. The next question is when people add choice, does that become a part of the pick list value? Also tick list value. Is there a possibility to have selection of multiple choice? Yes, there is a list of multiple choice. My used to one at a time. That's why it gave me one. Technically you can have multiple choices as well. In fact, I think this list was multiple choice. So if I choose sachet, notice. I have selected three items here. So how is that controlled? Column settings, edit column here. More options. Allow multiple selection. Next. When to use column as choice and when to put it as a lookup column as shown in the package type. The thing is obvious now, for example, packaging. Is this list of various types of packaging only going to be used in my entire career for this list? Then put it here. If there is a chance that that same list of packaging material or options is likely to, to be used somewhere else, then create it as a separate list. If you are not sure, believe me, whatever you think is hard coded eventually will require reuse. So if it's a list. Created as a separate item and use it as lookup that makes it more maintainable in future. Can we import list into Power BI directly? Absolutely yes, because SharePoint list has always been a Power BI's data source. That also means Power Query. That also means if you have used the wrong way of editing lists, which is convenient, that also can be unpivoted and converted to good value. So bad list. Sorry, let me because someone asked. Let me just explain this part because someone will have a question like that. So the list requires proper columns and good data. Good data means one column should have one kind of data, but very often we have a bad habit. Of creating bad formats of data entry because Excel allows you to do anything you feel like without troubling you. So what is the problem there? The problem is if you create a list like this and this we do very often. I am creating this. Let me just rename it to product. And now I want products data across multiple months. So very, very often people are going to say number and the name of this column will be Jan. And then. Name of this column will be sorry, not single line of text. This will still be a number and this will be Feb and people will happily create 12 num columns like this. This is bad data. 
column name should not have data name. But never mind. Unfortunately, this is very convenient for data entry. So the convenience of data entry I can't deny. So as a compromise for simplifying data entry, let's say we lived with this format and I'll just put one more column here just to make it realistic. Now this data is going to be easy to type because uh, let's say. And because this is like Excel, you can copy paste and all that, you know, and very easy to manage. But from an analytical point of view, this is a disaster. So ideally when you're analyzing this data, what should you be doing? You should not have this data because then Jan Feb March will become separate columns in a pivot table or whatever matrix you create. So ideally this data when you are importing in Power BI or any Power Query, you should get this data and immediately do one pivot so that then it comes into proper three columns product, month and value. <sighs> OK, so next. The next question I asked, why has Microsoft put in all these features in different apps and why not in a single product? How can you put all this in a single product? Why is Word different than Excel? It's like asking that question. No, each product has a specific purpose in mind. Whose purpose are need? So we have to understand which tool to use when like someone asked. Technically, if I wanted just number and text, I could have used forms. I could have used Excel. I could have even given a word table. I could have created forms. I could have created power. I have all kinds of things, but depending on the context, depending on the volume, depending on security requirements, what do you want to do as the next step? You choose the right tool in the right place. There will be some overlapping functionality, but if you just go one level up and look at the reason why the product was created, you will know over time which one to use when. Next. The next question is uh, to limit duplicate entries. Is it correct to make the column as a choice with allowing to add choice manually? Yeah, if you want unique. Choices. Uh, typically choices will repeat, so generally unique column is not applicable to drop downs because how many items will you put in drop down? So if it's genuinely variable, then by all means you can say allow entry where people can add their own things. But remember, even if you do that, whatever that extra other item someone added, that itself may get duplicated because someone else may have that problem. So generally choice field and unique doesn't go hand in hand. Okay. Next. The next question is which type of files that's images can we upload? All kinds of images. I showed you SVG and PNG just now. OK, how to decide which view is better? Is it dependent on the type of nature of data? No, it's dependent on many things. For example, when I'm creating new columns and designing this, it is all items view. Fair enough, but then when I'm entering data, you notice depending on the kind of data and the volume of data, we decided if it's a single record I'm going to enter once in 10 days, then this is good enough, right? But if I'm going to enter 20 records one after another, this is better. So that's from a data entry point of view, which view. There is a third option. This can be a very complex thing, and this form view itself is also confusing. And I want a different layout here. There's so much space gone for status, which is just a small thing. I want to put this next to it. That kind of thing cannot happen easily in SharePoint. So if you want a custom form, again go to integrate, go to power apps, and then you can create a proper app, which is a mobile app or a browser app, but will work both and have absolutely beautiful UI, absolutely customized exactly the way you want. Now having the data already, now this data, of course, I'm going to get in Excel and analyze, but suppose I wanted to work on this data here itself. There I may want another view. For example, I want different kind of packaging to be grouped. So what do I do there? I go to view, I go to filter. For example, filter. I want to filter something 
which is status cancelled. How do I do that? Of course I can do it from here. How do I do that? Ascending, descending? No, filter by. Now filter by, obviously I can do this. But then I want to filter by this and packaging equal to spray. I will have to go here and do a filter, so I can do that. But remember, there is one more nice button there. Every button has to be clicked. Only then you will understand. This one is a global filter. What does it give? It gives you all of them in one go. This is a beautiful feature so that you can say I want spray and notice it's live and I want whatever. So like that you get a much better control over what you are seeing. So that's filter, but now I want this filtered whatever multiple whatever filter I did. I want that to be saved. So what do I do? I have done some customization. And let's uh, save this as a view. So. Say sprays. So now this spray is a view like all items. Similarly, I can always go to all items now based on status. I want grouping. No problem. What do I do? Status group by status. Now what happens? It created groups for everything. Groups, right? We have groups for all different items in the status list. Now this group is giving giving me this. I want this like this. This itself is a view. I say save view as by what status. I can create a view only for myself or I can make it public so everyone can use it. So now I can jump between sprays and this very easily. But wait, this by status, whether it should be open by default, because there are 20 different statuses I'll have to close manually. No, that's very irritating. So further refinement can be done in current view. Remember we had gone to all items view earlier and there were options so I can customize it from here. So one of the things we have to do here is grouping which we have already grouped by right? We have grouped by status, so that's already done. But here you can actually say show it collapse so that people don't have to collapse 20 items manually one by one. So now when I go to this status item, what is going to happen? The moment I go there, it is automatically collapse. And while we are there, one more very, very useful view is this create a new view calendar view. If there is a date column, you can actually create a calendar view list. We have seen gallery typically picks up a picture and shows it like a thumbnail, but this is very useful start date and end date. So in this case, we have the same column called date. In some cases, it could be order date and ship date in which you could have chosen two. And for demo purpose, I'm just going to say create a date and actual date which we have added here. So two dates basically. And then there are more options. Title. What is the title? OK, that is the what to show and we'll give it a name. So let's call it. Something like that. So now what happens? It actually creates a calendar. This is a view and it's showing you what happened when. So this user manual was created this and delivered on this something like that. And notice all this is now just another view. Next. The next two question is, is list only restricted for 365 users within the organization or can it, can it be accessed by external users? If SharePoint external access is enabled, yes. OK, can we give permission to like edit view at top level instead of individual files? There is no file here. It's a list. So the permissions are given at list level. OK, with row level security, does it mean it is advisable to have one document list shared to all instead of creating multiple documents with respective sharing? That's the whole idea. That's why I said you have to unlearn Excel. That was not possible in Excel. So to maintain confidentiality, we send an empty Excel file in the same columns to 20 people. Now I created those 20 columns here, shared it with those 20 people. 
I went to settings, advanced settings and said people can read only their own. So that the whole reason why list is created once and shared with people in a contextual manner. Next. The next question is, is there any error message for duplicate entry? We will avoid duplicate and get correct number of rows for creating dashboard. That took different questions. Did duplicate entry error will be caught at the time of data entry, of course. And if you have enabled a validation said no duplicates, it will not accept the entire row. So that is the entry part. From a um, analytics part, yes, of course, there is a distinct uh, option in pivot table. So anything you drag drop, it is going to give you unique anyway. So if I added here, notice in some records there were multi selected items, but here it is giving me the correct count. So this is already unique. Now if you wanted to, and this was coming from, there is a distinct count, but that will happen only if you accessed it through Power Query data model, not if you directly connected to IQI. Next. The next question says, if two people are entering same data in the list, means what will happen? Two people can't enter the same row, first of all. If they are entering, they are entering their own row. So they will just get merged without you having to do anything. It's like live consolidation. Now it is possible that we have not restricted security, so anyone can edit anything. In which case, if there is a exact moment, some conflict, it will give you a conflict mirror, and then it will say this guy did this, that guy did it. You decide what to do, and that's rare. There is a conflict resolution locking mechanism. Behind the scenes, actually, it's access. OK, the next question is A created B as owner and gave full control. Can mm. B create additional owners? Yes. We can even remove A if you want. Owner oh. Next. The next question is for a personal column, can multiple rows be selected and the person be filled with where the input value is same? No. So what you're saying is I selected three rows. Now I go to grid view. What happens? I will still have those rows selected, but individual entry you can't do. If you are asking me in Excel context, something like this. Just to clarify. This is this was possible in Excel. For example, I want to change this. Sorry. Control click, control click, control click. Now save 22, control enter. No. Not Excel. Next. Is it possible to notify via email if someone else to external person after adding a record? Email what? Email some to an external ID after adding record. Yeah. You can sharing can be done at any point of time in the life cycle. So remember to fill the feedback form. Uh, uh, I'm going to download the feedback form now because some people may have to go. So I'm going to download the feedback form uh, at 447 and do the lucky draw and then continue answering questions. So next question. OK. The next question is how many rows and columns are available in list? Let, that's uh, I said uh, SharePoint limits. That link I will uh, post when I upload the video on YouTube. In the description I will post the link giving the exact link to go to on Microsoft documentation as to how many columns is the limit, how many rows is the limit. Earlier version it was 30,000 rows or maybe I'm sure it has increased now. The next question is once we select the option during export to Excel, can we change? Change to what? There's nothing specific mentioned. Yeah, so if the person who asked that question is still alive and online, uh, rephrase the question and give a more detailed question. Next question. 
Next question is in the date column, we see that either a date is seen like April 7th or four days from now. Mm. How to select this display option? Yeah, I showed you friendly date option. Let me show you. So when you go to date. In the column edit. <laughs> Friendly format. If I remove friendly format. Looks like this. Next. The next question is um, when we edit data after generating Excel query, will the changes get updated in Excel query? When we change the data after generating the Excel query. So Excel query is just a text file. The Excel query does not contain data. It contains the details of the list. On the browser, so you have to open that query file, decide whether you want to get data as raw data table or pivot table and then save the Excel file. So once the Excel file is saved, you right click in that raw data table or pivot table and refresh. The query file doesn't have data. Query file has information about where the data comes from. So if you already have IQI file downloaded for a list, you modified the list. You don't have to download another IQI file. Next. Can it be used for creating for creation of mark list? What list? Marks. Mark list. I don't know what you mean by that. Expand on that. Anyway, I'm going to take a pause now and look at the. Uh, forms. forms. I am going to download it. Yeah. I hope people have 30 people have given responses. Uh, I'm going to wait for one minute in case someone has not submitted. At 445, I'll download the list. OK, let's take one more question till then. OK. Uh, while sharing link of list, can we add time validity to it? Like the link is valid for the next 24 hours. Uh, not really. There is no time limit, but you can just disable the link or remove the link and end of story or go to share and just remove the rights of people. Go to share three dots, manage access. Yeah, now people you can say edit. No expiry date at such no, but you can just Go to this link now, for example, delete the link stops working or I have given it to external people, whoever has removed their names and it's done. OK, I'm going to download the list of feedback now. And then we'll do a look at all. All right, so. I'm just going to show you two columns. And needless to say, we will do the lucky draw using what? Of course, Excel. So this is the data. This is the order in which people added it. But we are not going to talk about the order. We just want people's names. So now what I'm going to do is each person is on a row. So how many people have given feedback? 30. Now I need to generate two people who are lucky. How do I do that? Very simple. It's Excel, right? So I want to generate a random number between 0 and 30. This is a demo. What happens right now is not the actual number of person. This is a demo. So how do you do that? Rank between 
this time this is a demo, so I'm just going to say one and a hundred. We don't have hundred people. This is a demo. So every time I when I enter, it will generate a random number. Recalc button in Excel is called F9. So every time I recalc, it generates the lucky draw. So now I'm going to say one to thirty, and now when I press enter, whoever comes as the row number is one of the lucky persons. So 26, let's see who is 26. Mushika Dias. And F9 for the next one. 24. Ravikant Mina. So congratulations, Ravikant and uh, Dias, please send your email ID. You can post it as a question itself. It's private. Others can't see it. We will make sure that we send you the voucher. OK, next question. OK, the next question is. Um, How many questions we, left by the way? We have another five odd questions. OK, sure. Can I will we use questions. Yeah. Can we use list for giving trigger in Power Apps? Power Apps does not have a trigger per se. Power. Trigger is in Power Automate and Power Automate can trigger a Power App if you want. Power App is for a UI. Entry, looking at something, adding data. Trigger is something which should happen after the row is added. Power App is used to create a custom UI for the list. Once the list item is added, that's the trigger. List item changing is a trigger. So just to show you what type of triggers are available, how do you find what type of trigger are available for a SharePoint list? That is a good question. So you, how do you decide or understand where can I trigger a workflow? That's a very good thought. How do you do that? You go to create a workflow, blank workflow. Now there are triggers, correct? There are triggers and actions. But this is showing all kinds of things here. What do I want to see? SharePoint. Now let's see lists. You see the list part is not available, so it's still SharePoint. Now in SharePoint, see this. These are all triggers. All these triggers are applicable. Now some fire, some are for document library and some are for a list. So wherever there is an item, that means it's a list. So selected item. New item is created. Item is created or modified. And so on and so forth. Item is deleted. So these are the triggers. Now, if you just want to see actions, just click here. This will tell you what can you do on a list. So technically speaking, all this can be done. So Adding an item to a list programmatically using Power Automate can be an action as well. OK, next. The next question is if list is used with Power Apps, is it refresh? Does it refresh automatically if data is changed? So Power Apps is going to link to the structure of the list and then Power Apps by default creates an add and edit screen for it. Now you created a list, created a power app, and then you added three more columns. Then power app has to be modified. It's not going to automatically lay it out. But if the structure is same, then power apps will work without a problem. OK, is list an advanced version of MS Forms or? No, they are two different things. They coexist. On the face of it, there are some common things, but the objective of why you're capturing the data and what is the context is different. Forms is for surveys and quiz. Uh, lists is for more business oriented data capture. The data types available, if you compare in both, you will see why they are two different products. What are the limitations of using Microsoft List? I don't see any limitation. The only limitation I can think of from a practical business data capture point of view is one to many is not possible. For example, here every row is independent. So now I want to create a list. 
which says one item is order and under that order items. That's a one order many items that kind of thing not possible. For that you will have to go to CDS, create a related table and then create a power app for that kind of things. That I think is the only limitation. Practically speaking, technically there may be more, but practically. Can we restrict deleting of any item and how? Absolutely. So when you say people can allow be allowed to edit and stuff like that, those people behind the scenes become contributors in SharePoint context. Now a contributor can add, update and delete. Now some people want a weird thing like add, OK, but edit also OK, but delete not OK. No problem. Then you create custom permissions in SharePoint. Saying add edit, no delete and then map it to the relevant users. So where do you do all that? You have to go to list, list settings. Security. Or permissions actually. And here you have to understand how to create custom permissions that is happening at site level, not at list level. So you need to know a little bit of SharePoint security to do that, but you can talk to IT who knows SharePoint and create a custom permission. Then it's absolutely possible. Next. The next question is. Um, is there any limitation with respect to date storage file size while using with Power Automate? Power Automate itself doesn't store any data. The trigger in this case is. The list in some other case the trigger could be email, some other case trigger could be something else. And then there is an action happening. That action is happening through Power Automate, but Power Automate itself is not storing the data. It's sending a mail, adding an item in some Excel file, adding a file to OneDrive or adding a message to teams or creating a task in Outlook or in planner or to do. So if at all you are worried about the size limit of whatever you have to look at the. Place or the tool or the app where the action actually is inserting the data. That application will decide the limits. For example, we have a rule or a workflow or a power automate thing which says as soon as I had an item, I want to tweet it. Now who is the output channel in this case Twitter? So whatever is the limitation is going to be controlled by Twitter, not by power automate. That way. Next. The next question is, is Microsoft list free app added to home users as well? Uh, I don't know. Let me check quickly till then you can ask the next question. I don't can think so. is there in home, but let me check. OK, the next question is can MS list available offline as in one line as in online? If any net issue I won't be able to use also. Does it auto save enabled? No offline, no. So home does not have lists. No. OK, that's all questions that we have for today. Very good. So. Thank you all for joining. How many people are still awake? Oh, 42. That's very nice. Thank you for your patience. If you have any one line or comments also, you can put it in chat before leaving. Uh, I hope this was useful. But don't just clap and go. Uh, very important to actually do something about it. And just to give you live feedback, let me also share the summary of the feedback with you. 37, oh sorry, 39 people gave feedback. So those extra nine could not be a part of the uh, lucky draw. Sorry about that. But I'd also promise we will give a prize to the best question. So let me see which one is the best question.
OK, I think I will give the prize to Prashant S. Who asked two people entering the same data in the list means what will happen? So that's conflict resolution in case in the rare situation when that can happen. All right, so we are already long, long overdue, but thank you for your patience and thank you for uh, the willingness to learn. The next uh, session we do. Uh, we will announce it very soon, but I'm going to do it on a non technical topic. Many people tell me that the way I approach technology is very useful and they understand technology better. And then I realize that many people who are in sales. They are trying to sell technology, but their approach is not very well liked it. Pushy, silly kind of thing. So how to do value based selling? I don't sell. I don't sell any of the products of Microsoft or any other vendor, but people understand it better and when you understand something better, then you will purchase something or invest in it. So whatever I have learned and I have also a colleague of mine called Gurjinder who has been a veteran in value based selling. So we are trying to do a session next time on value based selling with primary focus on technology, but people who are selling other types of products or services, I'm sure can also benefit from the generic benefit. So that's the next topic. So with that, let's close for the day. Thank you for your patience and thank you for supporting my venture. Have a nice day. Take care. Vaccinate yourself. Wear a double mask. Wear a three layered mask. Don't go for a cheap mask. And uh, get vaccinated as early as possible. And most importantly, try this out and use the list as an alternative to something which you're already doing in Excel. That's the proof of the pudding. And to do that, you'll have to undergo a lot of teaching to other people who are going to demand the same old Excel file. So teach it to other people in the context of a practical business situation, and that's the best way to learn. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Shesham. Bye bye.